Hallelujah. Well, good evening, everyone. We want to welcome you this evening service. God bless you. We also want to welcome those who is watching this broadcast. And we want to welcome you and say thank you for being with us this evening. And we pray that this service will be a blessing to each of us in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, let's we open up in prayer in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we come to you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, for your presence in this place. We thank you, Lord God, that you are in the midst of us, Lord. And we thank you for it. Let the Holy Spirit continue to minister in each of us who is here and those who is watching this broadcast and we thank you lord in advance in the name of jesus have your way holy spirit in this place and father we ask you Lord god in the name of jesus that you use our men of god pastor larry as your instrument as your vessel Lord god to speak to us each of us Lord god in the name of jesus and father have your way in the service tonight in jesus mighty name amen amen hallelujah well you may have a seat in the presence of the lord amen how many of us know that god is good god is good god is good all the time regardless and all the time because regardless regardless what you're facing regarding what the situations what are you dealing with? Because we are also, when we accept Jesus and become his followers, we also engage in a spiritual warfare. And so, but we know that we're not going against the flesh and blood. So don't be uh, upset with your siblings or your loved ones or neighbor. We don't go against the flesh and blood, but we go against the principalities and powers and rules of darkness and our weapon is not natural weapons but our weapon is the word of god so god is also calling us to be what to be a man and woman of prayer hallelujah god is also calling us to have this relationship with the heavenly father not just to be a one day a week encounter or some kind of appointment you turn on your tv and listen to sermon no you have to be a part of the church of god because god is speaking through every man of god and when you are part of specific church you will receive everything with god have to speak to you as you pray for your man and woman of God who God placed under you. So the first thing, when you are become a child of God, your life is not belongs to you. Your life is belongs to Jesus, right? So then you also say, Lord, what church do you want me to go to? And what church do you want me to be a part of it? Because it is important. It's a, important. And, and God will lead you to be a part of the church that you will be able to be fed from. Okay? So you have to continually what? Fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Right? So when you're in prayer, you say, Lord, you direct my steps. You guide me. What is your will? What is your plan? Direct my steps. Remember in the book of Proverbs, right? Chapter 3, 5, and 7. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all of the ways, acknowledge Him. Well, and He will direct your path. So you have to be a part of the church of God. Amen. And not just here one day and there one day. No, you have to be a committed. See, God is a faithful God. And His nature is the faithfulness, right? So, 
when we continually to grow in the Lord and continue to be transformed in His image and His likeness, also our nature has to be transformed as to be a faithful. Be a faithful and little, and God will give you a much, and you will be a faithful in that. But if you cannot be a faithful and little, how God can give you a much? Well, because see, a lot of times we say, Oh, Heavenly Father, I trust you. I trust you. Well, that's wonderful. And you should say that because we should trust our Heavenly Father. But our trust is also comes sometimes through the trials. Because this is, this is the most how we know Him more and more. This morning I was spoke with one of the sisters and um, and I mentioned one of the words and some of you might not like it either. She said, I don't like that word. And so I said to her, what about that long suffering? So I don't like that word, right? So, but it's a part, it's a, it's a, it's a part of the word of God, right? So sometimes we just want like this. You know, fast food drive, just like, like that. But you know, some things we have to overcome, amen? And through this long sufferings and through this uh, patience, you know, God is also building our character. The character for really, like who we really are in Jesus. You know, all of these things before him has to be set aside. That all nature, see, scripture is talking about it. We are new creation in Christ Jesus. But it's also our minds and it has to be renewed. And we have to be after a, a walk by the Spirit of God, not after the flesh. Because we have to put our flesh under the subjection of the Holy Spirit. And our flesh is always, you know, because it's a sinful. It's a sinful. See, our spirit is the born again. But our flesh is the same, right? So we have to renew our mind with the word of God. Don't put more garbage in you that you already had before. You are temple of the Holy Spirit. We are temple of God. We are holy through Him. Through Him. So we want to fill our temple with the holiness. Why are you watching these violent things? Especially if you have a violence of background. Your mama and daddy is fighting all their life. It's been already put in you as a seed. You want to get that thing out of you. So we want to be transformed in the image of, in the likeness of Jesus Christ. To be this holy people. To be set aside for the holy use. To be a friend of God. To have that relationship with the Holy Spirit. When God says something to you, my son, my daughter, you just says, Yes, I will do that. To examine your hearts. Examine your lives. In some areas where you weaken your, some areas, God knows. You call up in the name of the Lord and ask him for help. Not in your own strength and not on abilities. But through Christ. You can do all things through Christ Jesus, not in your own strength, by the Spirit of the living God. So before Pastor Larry come, I want to pray for you, for that relationship that God wants to have with you as his son, as his daughter. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, I lift unto you, Lord God, your people, and I thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Let the Holy Spirit minister to every person tonight in the name of Jesus. Let the conviction of the Holy Spirit move in this place and in, in, in even through the 
website and internet and everyone who is in their homes, Lord God, let the conviction of the Holy Spirit move. And I thank you, Lord God, that you are talking to your people because you promise us this is the year of year of visitation. That you visit your people. This is the year in the name of Jesus. And I pray, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, the correction. Lord, you said in your word, those who you love, that you will correct. And I thank you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, that you bring correction in your people, in their hearts, in their minds, in the name of Jesus, that you will adjust whatever needs to be adjust, that we are be a holy people set aside for your holy use. So, Father, touch every person in the name of Jesus. And Father, I thank you, Lord God, that your people, the blinds, come off of their eyes in Jesus' name. That they will walk in the truth. That they will turn away from their ways and they will turn to you, to your ways. And continue to transfer your people and your image and your likeness, Lord God. Fill their hearts with your love and your compassion, Lord God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank you, Lord God, that your people see each other, Lord God, and they see those who they minister, Lord God, as you see them, Lord. That they are set aside their own desires, Lord God, and they will put the new nature, the nature of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I speak blessings over your people, Lord God. Touch your people, Lord God, right now in Jesus' name. Have your way, Holy Spirit, in your people's lives. And we thank you in advance in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. How many of us want to be changed? How many of us want to be transformed more and more in his likeness, Lord? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, Pastor Larry is here. So he's going to minister to us. And so just get ready to receive spiritual food in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, glory. glory. A beautiful day in the neighborhood. <laughs> yes, it is. It is a beautiful day. Okay. How's everyone doing? Happy? Blessed. Happy, blessed, comforted. Knowing that you're not alone, that's a comfort within itself. Yes. Knowing that you're not alone. Amen. Amen. It's only 103 degrees right now, so we, we, <laughs> we got it made. It was 110 earlier. Okay. But now we're ready to receive the word of the living God. Amen. Amen. Are you ready to receive? Amen. Say I am. I am. Ready to receive. Ready to receive. The word of God. The word of God. The word of God. The word of God. Is life. Is life. And health. And health. And healing. And healing. To all my flesh. To all my flesh. Today. I purpose in my heart that I will not doubt God nor his word. I will believe. Therefore, I will receive. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. That's what God is expecting. He is expecting us to believe and receive. So, Father, in the name of Jesus. We, have, we come to you now in the gracious and mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. We thank you, Father, for this opportunity that you have given us to declare your word, to share your word, and to demonstrate your word to those that have need of healing. Father, I release my faith right now, and I declare and decree in the name of Jesus, no spirit of infirmity will be able to maintain his grip in the hearts of his, in the lives of the people that, that will release their faith tonight and, and purpose in their heart to receive. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I decree and I declare today is a day of breakthrough. Today is a day of miracles. 
Today is the day of signs and wonders in the name of Jesus. And Father, oh, glory to God. I thank you, Father, for your holy presence. Your presence is filling this place even now as I pray. And God, I just welcome you, Holy Spirit. I welcome the Holy Spirit in this place right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit, for joining us tonight. Now, Father, I ask you to anoint every ear to hear, prepare every heart to receive, make my tongue as of a pen of a red writer, to write your word upon the hearts, upon the mind of your people, that they will know the truth, and that the truth shall make them free. And we come with you now. Lord, we're going to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Well, glory to his name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I believe that we're in for a treat tonight. I want to sing. Can I sing my song tonight? I want to sing a song. It's already one up in the place, up in the thing there. Turn it on for me. Amen. I feel like I want to sing this song. Hallelujah. I'm happy. And I know it. Yeah. <laughs> Good volume. Yeah. Amazing grace shall always be my song of praise, for it was grace that bought my liberty. I do not know just how he came to love me so. He looked beyond my faults and he saw my need. And I to Calvary to view the cross where Jesus died for me how marvelous the grace that called my falling soul He looked beyond my faults He saw my need And I shall forever leave my night
set free from spirits of infirmity. I believe that tonight. Amen. Will you agree with me on this? Amen. The Bible said healing is what? It's the children's bread. Healing is the children's bread. So are you his child? Amen. That he's talking about you. Healing belongs to you. It's yours. Amen. You just got to take what God has already given you. Everything that God has already made available to you, you just got to take advantage of it. And I'm telling you, it's there. It's yours. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Well, glory to God. Let's go ahead on and get started. Tonight, we're going to start in the book of Isaiah chapter 53. Isaiah chapter 53. Amen. Because we want to just give it a good start off today. And I want you to prepare your heart to receive. Amen. I want you to prepare your heart to receive tonight. Isaiah 53. Amen. Now notice what it said in verse number one. He said, who had believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant. Glory to God. He shall grow up before him as a tender plant. And as the root out of a dry ground, there is no... He had no form of comeliness, and when he shall, when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Verse number three: He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrow, and acquainted with grief, and we hid as were our face from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely, he had borne our grief and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him, stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Glory to God. He said that we are. How many of you know what he said? He said we are. Not might be, not can be. He said we are healed. Amen. We are healed. 
Amen. Glory to his name. So if God said that we are healed, my God, what, what the only thing that can stop us from receiving our healing? If God has already declared that we are healed, what can stop us from receiving our healing? Doubt. Unbelief, doubt, that both of those are right. Amen. And not allowing the word of God to have first place in your heart. God has already made it possible for every man, every woman, every boy, and every girl to receive their healing. Amen. Amen. But, but, the, but you know, one of the biggest problems is that when people are believing God for healing, they come to the prayer line, they get prayed for, and, just, and when they get prayed for, then they, and after you're done praying, they still feel a little pain or whatever. They say, well, it didn't happen for me yet. So, I, you know, they, just, they make up their own mind that they, it's not happening. You know why they do that? Because it's not happening the way they think it ought to happen. Amen. It's not happening the way they think it ought to happen. And because of that, they, they immediately purpose in their heart, I didn't get it. I didn't get it. And so the, the man that is praying going on to the next person. And the next person, what did that next person do that that person didn't do? The next person believed that they received a healing even though the manifestation had not shown yet. Amen. So God wants you to understand something. He don't heal on your timetable. He healed according to his word and according to his promise that's in his word. Amen. God wants to set the captives free, but he wants you to take part in it. Amen. And you can take part with him or you can take part against him. To take part with him would be far better off than taking part against him. Because to take part against him, that means you're going to walk out the same way you come in. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Amen. So if we, want, if we want to receive our healing, if we want to receive our healing, then we want to open up our hearts and receive it by faith. Amen. Amen. Receive it by faith. Glory to God. So notice what he said in verse number one. Who had believed? I report. Who had believed? I report. Amen. And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? See, when God began to reveal his word to you, when God began to open up and expound upon his word by the, by the leading of the spirit of the living God, God is expecting you to open up your heart to receive exactly what he has prepared for you to receive. Amen. In this case, we're talking about divine health and healing. There'll be a, I, I've been in many churches teaching on, on healing and, and so on and so on before I come to California. That's all I used to do. I was evangelist. I was evangelist. I used to go from church to church. Sometimes I'd be in a church a week. Sometimes I'd be in a church two and three weeks at a time preaching the same subject. I know how to do it. That's what God taught me. That's what God trained me to do. Amen. And people, I'm telling you, people come into church had never heard me preach before. A man came in church, bent all over, walking like this, with a cane, with a, with a walking stick, real slow, like a turtle. And by the time he got to his seat, it was time to pray for the healing. <laughs> Amen. So he got up there. I said, you know, I, I don't sit down. and He don't sit down. Then, I, then I, I, I'm finishing up now, and, and I'm having a prayer line come up. People want to be prayed for, people that need healing their body. Amen. And he comes up. And this is in Moss Hill, Texas. <laughs> and, uh, and, he, and he was a, uh, and it was a whole line across the church, amen. And it was Moss Hill Seminole God Church. That's I remember that church too, amen. And uh, and the man name was Roger. <laughs> I remember his name, okay. amen. And uh, he walked, he come into church, amen. Glory to God. And 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 I and before I I, I I was praying for everybody. Will you receive your healing when I when I pray for you? Amen. See, I, I want to get them in agreement with, with the word that I've been preaching. Will you come in? Will you believe? Do you believe you receive your healing when I even answer on your prayer? And they said yes. And, and most, of, most of the ones that believed, and, and they actually said yes. Amen. Most of those that said yes, right out of their heart, right out of their heart, God released that healing. See, the healing power is on the inside of you. Amen. God's healing is on the inside of you because his spirit is inside of you. His spirit is on the inside of you. Amen. And when we come in agreement, the word of God, I'm telling you, that anointing, that anointing that's in my hand, when we come in agreement, I lay my hand upon you, it ignites. It causes it causes a chain reaction in the human body. Amen. And it causes that body to 
that it caused that, your spirit to, to release that, that, that healing power throughout your body. And God just, and God just, God just touched. And all of a sudden, that man came up. And I said, will you be, will you, will you receive your healing when I, when I pray for you? And he, was, he started opening his mouth. I, the Lord didn't let him open his mouth too much. Time he started opening his mouth, I popped him on his back. He, he was bowed over like this. He was bowed over like this. When he, when he, when, before he opened his mouth, I popped him on his back. He jumped straight up. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> He jumped straight up. He said, I'm healed. I'm okay. healed. Okay, yeah. Amen. He started working them legs and he started doing everything. He started leaning and jumping, you know, everything. And uh, But you know what happened? You know why people don't want, to, don't want to keep the healing? A lot of people, they get healed, but then they don't want to keep the healing, especially if they're on, if they're on a disability. <laughs> they don't want to lose that money. Hey Amen. That money is their is their is 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 their is their is their comfort zone. So they don't want to lose that money. So they they they'll receive the healing when they come to church. But then when they go back home, they back in the same condition because they don't want no one to see them and report them that they healed. Amen. But I want that, that's not what we're talking about tonight. But the thing what I'm talking about tonight is that God wants you healed. God wants you healed, and He wants you to He wants you to walk in by faith and not by sight. Amen. He wants you walking by faith and not by sight. In the word of God, in the word of God, it is God's will to heal you. Amen. Healing is uh, is for you today. It is God's will for him for you to be healed. And it is God's will for you to be healed today. Amen. Men believe that God sometimes healed. Men believe that God sometimes healed, healed the sick. Amen. But they believe, uh, but they have no uh, personal knowledge of God ever touching them in that way. So they, so they, they said, I believe God can heal when He get ready, or some some people can be healed, but but not everybody. <laughs> they believe this, this, this is the way this is the way people talk, but not everybody. And and God never and God and, and God never said I want this one here, but you don't have to worry about this one. I'm gonna I talk I see about this one later. No, when you come to God, you believe in God. God looks at each and every one the same. God look at you all the same. Amen. God wants you healed. God wants you delivered. God wants you free. Jesus, the knowledge of Jesus Christ as, as, as our healer is very important. We need to understand that. Because if you don't have that understanding in your heart, it's going to be kind of difficult for you to receive your healing. Amen. Healing is not something that, that can take place just because you're in a place. God has designed in his word that whosoever believeth shall receive. Remember what he said in, in Mark chapter 11, verse number 23? For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou moved, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Amen. That's what that, that's what that word means. Uh, that's where that word comes from, folks. So you got to believe what you're saying. You got to believe what you're asking for. You got to believe that God wants to heal your lungs. You got to believe that God wants to heal your kidney. You got to believe that God wants to heal your heart. You got to believe. It's not something that you can, you, you can't say, well, I, 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 I don't know if he can heal me because I've been like this for a long time. No, don't think that way because, see, you're knocking yourself right out of the ballpark. You're knocking, you're knocking, you're knocking yourself right out of the race, I mean. Amen. You want to hit a home run. You don't want. You don't want to be. You don't want. You don't want to be. Hit, you want to hit no foul ball. You want to hit a home run. Amen. So you want to hit. You want to hit that ball straight down through the center plate. Hallelujah. And 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 the, and, and the outfield is going to miss it. He's not going to catch it. And so you're going to run a home run. And you're going to you're going to make it all the way. In. Then you can say, Oh God, I thank you. I bring, oh God, yes. I, I know, God, that your word is true. You bore my sicknesses. You carry my disease. And by your stripes, I am healed. I, I do receive my healing. God, I thank you for my healing. Oh, God, glory to God. I receive my healing now. Woo! Jesus. Glory to God. Hey, Amen. You got to get excited. But you might even you might not even feel no change in your body. Hey, Amen. But your, your healing is not based on what you feel. Your healing is not based on how you feel. Your healing is based on what you believe in your heart. But you don't look healed. 
I, you look like the same way you did when you come in here. Yeah, I might look the same way on the outside, but according to the word of God, on the inside, I know I'm healed. Amen. And so I'm holding to what God said, not what you're saying. So what's going, so what, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? Because I refuse to, to, to listen to that spirit of doubt. Because I refuse to allow that spirit of doubt to, to, to penetrate what I believe in my heart. I'm not going to, I'm, 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 I'm going to, I'm going to receive my healing. I may not receive it right now, but I know in my heart it's already done. In the natural, it might take a little bit to catch up with me, but in my, in my spirit, I know that it's done. Amen. So I'm going to hold on to what I know in my heart that God has already done. I'm not going to be concerned about what they say. All I know what God's word declared over me, I received that. And so when I when, so when I lay my hands upon you, when I when I begin to release my faith with you, when I come in agreement with you, Amen. You come in and you and you set you set your agreement in line with the word of God, and God is going to move on your you behalf. God is going to move on your behalf, and then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, you're going to come under attack. Why? Because the devil doesn't want you to be healed. The devil wants you to walk, keep on walking around with a with a a, a, a sobbing. Uh, oh, uh, I went to church and I asked the preacher to pray for me, uh, but it didn't work. <laughs> it ain't that it didn't work it's because the thing is, you didn't work. <laughs> Your heart wasn't working. What didn't didn't line up with the scripture? Amen. Glory to God. So we have to understand what God. We got to understand what God is saying to us. Amen. Can I take you to another scripture now? Because you see, a lot of, a lot of times we're not here because of because of uh, uh, what, the, what what God called unbelief. In the book of Mark, chapter six. In the book of Mark, chapter six, and let's look at verse number. Let's look at verse number four. Let's start reading verse number four. Mark chapter six. Oh, here we go. Okay, here we go. And look, and sorry, read verse number four. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, but in his own country, and among his own kin, and in his own house. And he could there do what? Do no mighty works, save that he lay his hands upon a few sick folk and healed them. And he marveled because of their what? Unbelief. See, unbelief is one of the key elements to block the healing power of God from manifesting in your life and in your body. Amen. In your body. Amen. And he went up and he went around about the villages teaching. So he kept on teaching, regardless whether they believe it or not. He kept on teaching. Amen. Isn't that what the Bible said? He went about the villages teaching. And he called unto him the twelve and began to send them forth two by two. And that way I call it OJT. You know what OJT is? On the job training. On the job training. Jesus started training the disciples to, to minister in the same capacity that he was ministering while he was in the earth. Amen. He didn't wait till he leave the earth, that he left the earth, and then try to get them to practice. He trained them while he was in the earth. Amen. He trained them while he was in the earth. Now let's go to the book of Luke. Let's go to the book of Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. Amen. In Luke chapter 4. In Luke chapter 4. Look at verse. We can start reading here verse number. Luke chapter 4. Begin reading here verse number. Verse number 14. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit in, into Galilee, and there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. And his and he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. Verse number 17 and there was delivered un, in, unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it is where, where it was written. <clears throat> the spirit of the Lord, you need to get this. He said, The spirit of the Lord is upon me, 
because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, he has sent me to do what? Mm -hmm. To heal the broken heart, to preach deliverance to the captive, recovering of sight to the blind, to set, to set a liberty to them that are bruised, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And the Bible says in verse number 20, and he closed the book, and he gave it again to the minister and sat down and his and the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened upon him. Amen. Were well, fastened upon him. Now now I don't know why I don't I don't know I don't understand why why they they, they are so fastened upon him. Maybe because of the word that, that he was reading, it registered to their heart as he was reading it. Amen. In other words, you know that sometimes when someone is reading the word and the word of God, you can you can sense that the spirit of God is speaking to you through that word. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. Oh my God, I feel the Holy Ghost in this place right now. Amen. And so I believe that the same thing that was going on with those men as he was reading, the word that he was reading was ministering to their hearts. It's so much that they fastened their eyes upon him, expecting more. Expecting more. So now look at verse number 21. Verse number 20, and he began to say unto them, This day is the scripture, is this scripture what? Fulfilled. Fulfilled in your ears. See, they knew something else was coming. They knew something else was coming. And so Jesus, he 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 began to, I mean, he began to radiate the glory of God among them, and they began to expect, they began to, oh my, they was in hot, they was in anticipation. Amen. Verse number. And verse number 22 says, And all bore him witness and wondered, Is, is that the great, what, is it, wondered, is the, great, the gracious words <coughs> which proceeded out of his mouth? And they said, Is this Joseph's son? Mm -hmm. And he said unto them, Ye will surely say unto this proverb, Physician, heal thyself. Whosoever, whatsoever, whatsoever we have, whatsoever we have heard he done in Capernaum, do also here in thy country. And he said, Verily I say unto you, no prophet is accepted in his own country. In other words, he couldn't do no mighty works. Remember, we just read that right over there in uh, what did I tell you in Mark chapter six. He said, a prophet is without honor, save in his own country and in his own house. And, and among his own kin. Amen. So we see here that Jesus, he he, he wanted to heal people everywhere he go. He, he didn't get pleasure out seeing the people walk around in pain and sickness and disease. Amen. Even when the leper came to him, he said, Master, if thou wilt, thou can make me clean. And, and he said, and, and, and he put forth his hand and touched him. And immediately he said, I will be thou clean. And what happened? And the leprosy departed. Amen. And remember the ten lepers? They was far off from him. And they saw Jesus and they cried out with a loud voice. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on us. Amen. And, and he told them, go into the city. He screamed back out at them. Go into the city and give them the testimony of what God has done for you. And, and as they, and the Bible says, as they went, as they went, as they went, they knew that they were being healed. And only one only one had enough compassion, enough love, enough uh, uh, enough uh, grace in his heart to turn back and to acknowledge what was done to him. And what did he do? He turned back and he fell down on he fell on his face before on his back at his feet, and he began to worship the Lord. He began to worship, and then the Lord said, "Wasn't there ten of you worse than I?" Okay. Amen. He said, "I don't know, Lord." And he said. He said, rise up. Your faith has made you what? Whole. Whole. He was not only healed, but because he turned around and gave God the glory for what was done in his body, he was made whole. Amen. Glory to God. You see, you receiving your healing is something that God is, is, is wanting you. He, he expects you to. But you got to have the right mindset. Your, your spirit has to come in agreement with his word. Amen. You don't have to walk around not able to, 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 to 
accomplish what God has placed in your heart to accomplish in these last days. God wants you to know he not only came to save you, he also came to heal you and to deliver you and to set you free. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. They see up, they, you see others, you see others being healed, amen. They see others being healed, but they question whether healing is God's will for them. Mm -hmm. now, I've been around a lot of people, and I heard, I heard so many people, they, uh, people being healed and, and, and everywhere, amen. But then there's always a certain group. <laughs> there's always a certain group, and they are uh, so inquisitive that they have stepped away from the promise because of their unbelief. They talked themselves right out of God's will for their lives. Amen. They talked themselves right out of God's will for their life. Amen. With the just questioning, questioning. Amen. They are waiting for a special revelation. You ever see about just, well, I believe that God can heal me, but you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm just going to wait for a, a, a ram of word. I'm going to wait for a revelation. And then I know I'll get my healing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Hey, but my, I'm telling you right now, uh, you're going to be waiting for a little while. Amen. You'll be waiting for a little while. Everything God, everything that God had created, God said was good. When he created you, he said, he said, good. Amen. 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 So, so, uh, so when God created man and woman, God said, it was good. very good. Not just good, but very good. Amen. In Genesis chapter 1, verse number 28 and 30. Amen. But now, as we continue in this day, let's, let's look at another scripture here. Because you see, we need to see, and we need to see what God is saying about us today. Amen. We need to see about what God is saying us today. Jesus called his 12 disciples and he gave, look at Deuteronomy chapter, excuse me, not Deuteronomy, Matthew chapter 4. Matthew 4, 23. Matthew 4, 23. Amen. Matthew 4, 23. And it says here, Jesus, and Jesus went about all Galilee teaching in the synagogues and, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. And healing all manner of sickness and all manner of diseases among the people. And his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with diverse disease and torment, and those that and those which were possessed with devils, and those which were lunatic, and those that had uh, palsy, and he healed them. Amen. And there followed him great multitude of people from Galilee and from the capitalists. And from New Jerusalem, and from Judea, and he did what to, and and from Jordan, and from uh, beyond Jordan, verse number five, chapter five, verse number one, and seeing the and seeing the multitude, he went up into what, uh, how, he went up into a mountain, and when he was set, his disciples came unto him, and and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, "Blessed are the poor." in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven blessed are the they which mourn for they shall be comforted blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth blessed are they which blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness for they shall be filled blessed are the peace blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy <coughs> blessed are the, the pure in heart for they shall see God Blessed are the peacemakers, for they are called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when ye shall reveal when when ye when ye when men shall reveal you and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they, the prophets which were before you, ye are the salt of the earth. 
And if the salt has lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city. Oh, you see what it, you don't see what he's saying? Oh my God, I feel the Holy Ghost. You ought to stick out. My God. It said, verse number 14, you are the light of the world. <clears throat> a city that sit upon a hill cannot be hid. Neither, neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it giveth light unto all that are in the, in the house. Amen. So what I'm doing right now, I'm giving you, I'm, I'm, I'm turning on the light so that you can receive from the light that is, is, that is, that is, Begin to burn bright in here. Amen. What do you mean, Pastor? I'm talking about the light of the word. I'm talking about the light of the word. Amen. The life of the word is light. And once this light is turned on, your spirit received this revelation. Your spirit received this light. And all of a sudden, your spirit begin to begin illuminate. You, you begin to become illuminated from inward, from your inward parts. Amen. Then begin to spread to your outward part. You know, you can come in here, you can have such a gloom look on your face. Then if when, the moment you sit down and get quiet before God and begin to say, Father, I worship you. Father, I praise you. Father, I thank you for your love, for your kindness, for your goodness, for your mercy. Endure forever. God, I thank you, Lord God, that you that you watches over your work concerning me to perform it in my life. And such a time as this, Father, I know, God, that you are my Lord. You are my Savior. You are my King. You are my, you are my Deliverer. You are, you are my Father, my God. Amen. And all of a sudden, the glory of God has caused your countenance to change. Why? Because you because you came in, you came in, uh, you came in all down and out. But the moment you sat down and got comfortable and began to worship God, began to praise God, it causes your whole countenance to begin to light up. Why did your countenance light up? Because you began to you began to step into His presence, into His anointed into his uh, power to deliver you, to set you free from the burden that you walked in with. That burden was lifted and the yoke was destroyed because of the anointed. Amen. That pain, that sickness that you're experiencing, it can surely leave you even today once you begin, oh my God, and I'm talking to someone right now. You've been dealing with the spirit of depression. I mean, I mean to tell you right now, this spirit of depression has been, I mean, it's been overwhelming you. And you thinking that God, have you forgotten about me? God, where are you? This is what you're saying. God, where are you? It, it's not, why do I have to go through all of this? Why is this happening to me? This is someone talking like this right now. Amen. And God is, and, and, and God said, why don't you just step aside from all your activities and just step into my presence and begin to acknowledge me, begin to worship me, begin to call upon me, begin to adore me, begin to uh, 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 praise it, begin to worship, begin to uh, acknowledge that I am. Then all of a sudden, that depression that you are experiencing is going to be lifted. Why? Because you step out of that spirit. You step away from that spirit. And you step right into the spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. Now that spirit of depression has no power over you no more. Amen. Until you uh, open up your door back and go back into that area. Because he's not gone. He's going to wait for you and see when you accept him back. <laughs> I, I, know what I, I know what I would do if I were you. I would, I, would, I would write out a receipt and say, uh, you don't pay, you don't live here no more. You've been evicted. <laughs> Give him an eviction notice. Amen. You spit a depression. I'm done with you. You don't live here no more. Now go. Amen. This is not your home. This is not your home. <laughs> Amen. Amen. See, the only way you're going to understand what God is doing, is you, got, you got to break it down into a natural term where you can, where you can identify with it. Amen. And the moment you identify with it, the devil can't, I'm telling you, the devil, he, he thinks he's smarter than you. But he's not smarter than you because the Bible said, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. And he is the God of all knowing. He's, the, he's omnipotent. He's omnipresent. He's omniscient. Amen. He's everything that you could ever think of. And he's living on the inside of you. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Ah. Whew. Yeah, Jesus. Oh, 
He's in me. He's in me. And he's in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. So you that deal with that depression, don't let the devil ride your back any longer. Amen. Don't let the devil ride your back any longer. Amen. Kick him off. Send him on his journey. Send him on his way. Glory to God. In Matthew chapter, in Matthew chapter, oh my God, chapter 10. In Matthew chapter, let's go to chapter 9 first. Let's go to Matthew chapter 9 and verse number 35. Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of and healing every disease and sickness. Amen. And what was that at? Matthew 9.35. Matthew 9, 35. Are y'all there? And Jesus went about all Galilee, uh, went about all cities in the villages, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Amen. See, Jesus, he expect people to, to, to be healed. He didn't go out there just to just to be going. He went out there, he went out there with a purpose to heal the sick. To cleanse the levels, to raise the dead, and to cast out devils. Amen. Glory to God. See, this purpose, the Son of God was manifest. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifest. Oh, glory to God. Amen. Now let's go to chapter 10, chapter 10, and, and uh, chapter 10, verse number 1 through 8. Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10. Are you there yet? Glory to God. Now notice what he said right here, chapter 10, Matthew chapter 10, verse number 1. And when he had called unto him his 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal. Notice what he said? He gave, who, who gave who power? Jesus. He gave the yeah. disciples, he gave his followers power. Are you a believer? Yes. Are you a follower of Jesus? Amen. Then he's talking about you. He has given you power. Power. Power to do what? Power to do what? Let's read it again. And when he called the 12 disciples together, he gave them power and he gave them power against unclean spirits and to cast out death and to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of diseases. Amen. God gave you this power. He gave you this anointing. He gave it to you as a believer. Every believer have this. Amen. But you know what? Not every believer gonna not every believer gonna is gonna step out in it. Because they because they are so inquisitive. Now why would God give me such a wonderful uh, uh, such a wonderful gift as, as this? If he can trust you. Who who do he think I am? <laughs> he know who you are. <laughs> Amen. Who do he think I am? So we so you gotta understand. God already, God already sees what He created you to become. He already, have, He already prepared a table before you in the presence of your enemies. He already anointed your head with oil. Notice that verse number two. And the man, and the name of the twelve apostles are these. And He gave their names. Then one Simon, and who is called Peter, and Andrew, and and brother James, and son of Zebedee, and John his brother, Philip, and Bartholomew, and Thomas, and Matthew, and uh, the publican James, the son of Alphaeus. And Liberius, uh, La whose surname is Tiberius, Simon, the Canaanite, and Judas, the Iscariot, who is also to betray him. These twelve, these twelve, Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentile, and unto the city of the Samaritan, enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep. Of the house of Israel. In other words, I want to, I want you to go to the Jews first. I want you to go to the to the to the Jewish nation first. Amen. I want you to, to take this good news. I want you to take this deliverance power. I want you to take this healing anointed to the to the nation of the Jews. Amen. This was God. This was God. This was God's command. Amen. God commanded it. Amen. Now know what it goes on to say. Know what it goes on to say. Glory, glory to God. Verse number seven, and as they, and as you go, preach, saying, "The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you receive, freely give." 
Amen. Provide neither gold nor silver nor sh nor brass nor 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 purses and 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 no strip no strip for your journey. Neither two coats, neither shoes, nor yet strays for for your for your for a workman is worthy of his meat. Amen. For a workman is worthy of his meat. Glory to God. So we see here that God is uh, he, he sending the gospel to the Jewish nation first. Amen. And what happened? What what happened? What did they do? They rejected it. They rejected it. Glory to God. Oh my God! Oh, I, I, oh, that's oh, I'm getting off into a totally different subject now. I can't go there right now. <laughs> I can't go there right now. Amen. But I'm telling you that God expects for you to release your faith right now. Amen. Look at uh, Mark chapter Mark chapter five. Mark chapter five. Oh my God! The next book over. Mark chapter five. Now, now this is a very familiar passage of scripture we're talking about for the read right now. Now, notice what it said in verse number twenty-three. Amen. Verse number twenty-three. Oh my God. No, verse number 25. Verse number 25. And, and, and a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years mm -hmm. had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had was nothing better but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus came in the press behind for she to, came in the press behind mm -hmm. to touch it and touch his garment for she said if I may touch but his clothes I shall be whole. Amen. Verse number 29 and straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she knew it in herself, in her body, that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus immediately, knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched me? Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, verse number 31, And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude throb thee, and sayest thou who touched me? And he looked around about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, oh, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. Now notice it said verse number 34. And she said, and he said unto her, Daughter, Thy faith has made thee whole. Daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. See, a lot of times we want something from God, but we don't we want don't want to release our faith to receive it. And, and a lot of times that's the only way we're going to get it is by releasing our faith. Amen. It's by releasing our faith. God has so much in store for his people, but his people must understand. Let's go to the book of Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. Glory to God. Are y'all are still with me? Mm -hmm. Luke chapter 5. We're going to read a few of these verses here. Amen. Now notice, we're going to start reading here verse number 17. Start reading verse number 17. And it came to pass on a, on a certain day as he was teaching in their synagogues, pre, uh, Pharisees and doctors of the, of the law sitting by, which were come out of every town and of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem and the power, notice what he said, and the power of the Lord was what? was present, was present to heal them. The power of the Lord was present to heal them. Amen. And behold, men brought in a man, a, a bed, a, my God, let me read verse 18 again. And behold, men brought in a, a bed, a man which had taken with the palsy, and they sought, to, they sought means to bring him in, and they lay him before him, and then when they could not find a way to bring that they might uh, bring him in, because of the multitude, they went upon the housetop and let him down through the tower with his couch into the midst before Jesus. And when he saw their faith, nobody said when he saw their faith. 
he said unto him, Man, thy sin are forgiven thee. And the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this which speaketh blasphemy? Who can forgive sin but God alone? But when Jesus proceeded their thoughts, he answered and said, He answered and said unto them, What reason ye in your hearts? Whether it's easier to say, Thy sin be forgiven thee, or to say, Rise up and walk. But that ye may know that the Son of Man had power upon earth to forgive sin, he said unto the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise and take up thy couch and go thy go to thine home, go to thine house, into thine house. Amen. Jesus is showing these people the presence and the power of Almighty God, and not because not because. Uh, because the power was there for, for all of them to be healed. But instead of them releasing their faith to receive their healing, they began to uh, they began to become very curious. Who do this man think that he is? Is he? Is, is, and I can just, you know, just paraphrase. Is this not David's son? The carpenter? Amen. But notice what he, notice what he said. No, no, but notice, notice no, how Jesus said it though. Respond. Notice how Jesus, notice how Jesus, how, how he replied to these men. Amen. <clears throat> verse number 34, verse number 24. <clears throat> but that ye may know that the Son of Man had power on earth to forgive sin, he said unto the, he said unto the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise, take up thy couch, and go into thine house. You see, the power of words, as God, as the Lord speak, he speaks with compassion, and he speaks with conviction. And he speaks with love. Because, you see, you got to love people in order to, in order to want to minister to the people. Because if you don't love them enough to minister to them, you're not going to want to be bothered with them. <laughs> I'm serious. You ready? Because a lot of, when you get a lot of people together, there's a lot of different personalities out there. And there's a lot of people with attitude problems. They think they, could, they, think, they, think they should be first before someone else because they have better clothes, a better house, a better car. They think they should be uh, in front, on the front row, front seat. When God is just concerned about your heart, He's not concerned about your attitude. He's concerned about your heart. But if your attitude get in the way, you go to the back of the line. <laughs> you go to the back of the line. But I like I like the way I like the way the Lord deal with people because He shows the compassion of a true Father. Oh, Hallelujah. He chose the compassion of a true father. And, 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 and that's something that a lot of you never got at home. Amen. Did you get it at home? No. Did you get it at home? raised Did you get it at home? I was raised by my mom. You were raised by your mama? Okay, you were mama's baby. <laughs> Oh, glory to God. But I tell you, it's all right how you was raised or who raised you. Mm -hmm. But the point is, who's raising you now? You have a, you have a father that loves you, a father that cares about you. He even cares about your health. He even cares about your well-being. Mm -hmm. And so he's expecting you to acknowledge him by entering to his gates with what? Thanksgiving. With thanksgiving. And into his courts with what? Praise. With praise. And bless his name. And do what? Bless and his bless name. his name. Because what? Because he, he is, is good. good. <laughs> and his mercy endure. endureth forever. forever. Glory Amen. to God. Amen. Now, there's an anointing in my life to minister to the sick. There's an anointing upon my life to minister to the sick. I know that. I've been knowing it for a long time now. Amen. And that's why many people 
come around me and they ask me to pray for them. Amen. And uh, and when I pray for them, and if they if they are in the right spirit to believe, they receive their healing. Amen. And God wants you to be in that same mindset. He wants you to have that same heart conviction. Because you see, when I lay my hand upon you, and when I release my faith with you, when I say, so in the name of Jesus, receive, the only thing you should be concerned about, Lord, I receive my healing. That's the only thing you should be concerned about. When I say, in the name of Jesus, as I have, as, as I have prayed over your, over your sickness, and as I release my faith and release that healing of nothing, and I say, Father, in the name of Jesus, be, be healed. The only thing you should be concerned about, Father, I receive my healing now. That's the time you release your faith and receive your healing. Amen. That's not the time that I still got pain here. No, that's not what you do. You open up your heart, you open up your mouth, you say, I receive my healing now. And you might still have pain even when you get home. But go home in faith. And by the early in the morning, you find out that that pain has started to disappear. And you start wondering, where did it go? It's, it's gone. And all of a sudden, the joy of the Lord is my strength. <laughs> Amen. Why? Because you 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 didn't doubt God. Even though it didn't happen when you thought it should have happened. It didn't happen. It didn't happen. But when you woke up the next day, you found out that all that pain was gone. You healed. You're free. You're delivered. Oh, hallelujah. Healing belongs to you. Will you release your faith with me now? Will you come in agreement right now with me and release your faith for healing? Yes. Amen. I'm talking to you online right now. Will you release your faith with me? Will you agree with me for your healing? Because my time is up for preaching. <laughs> now it's time for me to release the anointing. Hallelujah. Will you receive your healing? Oh, glory to God. I remember when I said that in Indonesia. I died and preached the word of God. The power of God came down upon me. And I asked the congregation, will you receive your healing? And the whole, oh yes, they were all were so excited. They, they were ready for it. Okay. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Not only, my God, a lot of people receive a healing just by acknowledging it. But then there was those that would come up in a wheelchair. A couple of them got about wheelchairs. I said, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Everybody standing over there looking. <laughs> and God raising them up. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I believe that God wants to touch your lives. I believe that God wants to heal you right where you are. You have heart problems, God wants to heal your heart. How do I know? Because he healed mine. And, I, and I'm not letting go of it. You got, you got a, 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 a liver problem, God wants to heal your liver. How do you know? Because he healed mine. And I'm not letting go of it. Oh, hallelujah. Woo, glory to God. God wants to heal. God wants to deliver. God wants to set the captives free. God wants to bring you to a place where you will know without a shadow of a doubt that all things do work together for good to them that love him for those who are called according to his purpose. God is no respecter of persons. Faith cometh where the will of God is known. Amen. When you know the will of God concerning a subject, you can have faith in God for that subject. Amen. And that's why I love preaching and teaching along this subject because I have faith in this area. Amen. I have faith in this area. God wants to heal you now. Amen. He wants to heal you now. Glory to God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for your anointing. I thank you, Father, that you are mindful of your word. And Father, we can say to this sycamine tree, be thou plucked up by the root. And we can say the same to this sickness and to this disease. We say to you, sickness, disease, we say, be thou plucked up by the root. And be thou cast into the sea. And Father, we believe that your 
as we declared, as we decreed, it is done. Because we release our faith. Because we believe. Now, Father, so be it done. I thank you for it now, in Jesus' name. Now, Father, I release that healing anointing. I release it by faith, in Jesus' name. Oh, the listening audience, I rebuke every sickness, every disease, every infirmity right now. Every virus and every germ, I rebuke it in the spiritual realm right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I bind it off of the people that are infected right now. I rebuke it. I loose it from its assignment in Jesus' name. Father, now I'm asking, let the angels right now, the healing angels, let them go forth now ministering to the heirs of salvation with healing and deliverance, setting the captives free. God, I thank you for it. I give you praise. I give you glory. I give you honor. And I know, God, that it is done. It is done. All things do work together for good to them that love you. And God, you know that I love you. I may not be perfect, but my love for you is unshakable. I love you with all my heart. And I'm expecting, Father, that you love me too. And because I know that you love me too, you love me back. I know, God, that, that, I, that I have my petition that I have asked of you. Because I, know that, because I know that you love me. I know that you've heard me. And because I know that you've heard me, I know that I have my petition. Now, Father, let the people receive their healing now. I thank you for it. Oh, let the people receive their healing now. In the name of Jesus. And Father, I thank you for it. I thank you for it. Receive it now. There it is. Receive your healing now. Receive your healing now. In the name of Jesus. I rebuke every virus. I rebuke every germ, every, virus, every disease, every sickness, every infirmity. I rebuke it right now in the name of Jesus. I speak to that pancreas. Be healed. I speak to that colon. Be healed. I speak to that cancer. Leave that body now in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. Skin cancer, go now in Jesus' name. Oh, shout out la la ba Lung disease, go right now in the name of Jesus. I command those lungs to clear up. I command those lungs to clear up. I command those lungs to begin to function properly right now in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. I command those lungs to, to be healed now in Jesus' name. Oh, shout out la la ba Ye ke la la ba kum la sa ka la ba Oh, shout out la la ba Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Now, Father, I speak to that heart condition. I speak to that person with that heart condition in the name of Jesus. And Father, I call say, okay, that irregular heartbeat, I rebuke you. You are attacked from the pits of hell. You irregular heartbeat, I recommend you to go from that person right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I release the anointing that caused that heart to function properly. Father, every valve is open properly at the right time and closing at the right time. In the name of Jesus, I thank you for it now. Father, I thank you for the arteries. The arteries, a bit, it, it, oh God, the, flood, the blood is flowing freely. In the name of Jesus. The blood is flowing freely. In the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for that spiritual blood transfusion right now. That blood that was laid upon the mercy seat. Father, let that same blood begin to flow through their bodies as a spiritual uh, blood in, uh, tra transfusion. In the name of Jesus, I thank you for it. I thank you for it. Now, Father, let the life of the word begin to rise up within them. Because there's healing. There's healing in the anointing. And it's flowing. And it's flowing right now. Thank you for it, Father. Thank you for all shout out. Father, I speak to the to the liver. I speak to the liver right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. My coat. Someone you've been diagnosed with cirrhosis of the liver, and God, and God has given you a second chance right now. In the name of Jesus. Stop doing what you know you shouldn't be doing. In the name of Jesus. And within five days after you made that commitment to stop doing what you are doing that has caused this liver to be destroyed. Within five days, after you have truly made a commitment to stop, now this is definitely going to be a commitment because it's hard for you in a natural because you're craving this 
You're craving it. You've got to have it. You're addicted. But if you let it go within five days after you have made a this quality decision in your heart not to do it again, that liver is going to begin to be healed. It's going to begin to amend. It's, and all of a sudden, you're going, to, you're going to see your color turning to normal. Your blood is turning to normal. Why? Because the liver is being corrected. It's being healed. It's being made whole because of the anointing. I'm talking to someone right now. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I have delivered that which you have placed upon my heart. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, let the signs, wonders, and miracles and the testimonies come forth now in Jesus' name. And I give you glory for it. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Y'all get that out of this today? Now I'm going to pray for you that is here that want to be prayed for because the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. For He had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me <laughs> to heal the broken heart, huh? Someone is asking prayer for the leg. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, you see the problem that is going on with this leg. And Father, I'm asking you right now, Lord, that you would touch this person right now, that you would touch this person right now, that you would heal this leg condition right now in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you for it. That you heal this person with this leg disease right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I'm asking this. Now lay your hand upon that leg right now. What a pain is that? Lay your hand upon that leg right now. What a pain is that? In the name of Jesus. Now, Father, as a point of contact, I lay my hand upon my leg. And as that person lay their hand upon their leg, Father, let the anointing flow right now. I release your healing power into that leg. In the name of Jesus, I command that leg to be healed. I command that leg to be healed right now in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for it. Receive your healing. Right now, receive your healing. Just, per just receive it right now in Jesus' name. Say this, I receive my healing. I receive my healing for my leg right now. Say it. Amen. And mean it. Glory to God. Anybody else saying anything? There's another person pray, uh, asking for prayer for wife. Uh, Someone asking prayer for the wife? Yeah. Uh, tumor or something? Tumor in the brain? Something. On the head? Something the spot. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for this person, Father, that is asking prayer because of this, this tumor, this spot on the, on the head. Father, in the name of Jesus, lay your hand upon that spot right now. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke this attack from the pits of hell. Father, in the name of Jesus, I cancel this assignment from the kingdom of darkness. I release the anointing right now to heal this person. In the name of Jesus. Now, Father, I rebuke that thing. Let it lead that person now. And I give you glory for it in Jesus' name. I thank you that it's done in Jesus' name. Amen. I thank you that it's done in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Glory to God. Praise you. Praise you. Praise you, Lord God. Anybody else? Glory to God. I'm going to have to. That's what I'm going to have to do. When I'm teaching on healing, I'm going to have to let y'all get on all the networks that I'm on. So when the people start acting for healing, y'all be able to give me the, 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 what they're saying. Amen. Glory to God. That's, that's good. I like the way y'all handled that just now. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord. Let's go ahead and receive our, 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 our heal, uh, what that, our, our healing uh, offering. <laughs> Anointed offering. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God is good. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. Father, we thank you for this offering, Lord God. And 
Father, for those that are going to be sown by the internet, God, we ask you in the name of Jesus that you would just move on their hearts, God. Show them, Father, the, the importance of seed, time, and harvest. And God, I thank you for it right now in Jesus' name. Your word is life and health and healing to all our flesh. We believe that and we receive it as done. Now, Father, thank you. We bless this seed. And we give you glory for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. You know, God is good. God is good. Amen. Now, if you never made Jesus Christ law of your life and you want to do that today, I want to I want you to know that God loves you right where you are and that it is his will not only for you to be healed, but for you to be saved, for you to be born again, for you to come into the family of God. And how are you going to do that? You're going to do that by acknowledging Jesus Christ, by repenting of your sin and asking Jesus to come in your heart. And how are you going to do that? I'm going to show you right now. Just, just follow this example that I'm going to show you and uh, say this with me, especially if you are born in Jesus Christ to be coming your heart, be the Lord of your life. Say this with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sin. Forgive me, Lord. Come into my heart. Create in me a right spirit and renew in me a clean heart. Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God, that you died for my sin. Because I confess this with my mouth and believe it in my heart, I am saved according to your word. Thank you, Father for saving me. Amen. Hallelujah. If you say that simple prayer, God is already working on your behalf and you are saved. Glory to God. Now ask God, where would he have you to go? What church he would have you to attend so that you could be nourished up under the, the word of God. Amen. God has already prepared a pastor for you to sit under. Amen. So ask God, where will he have you go to church? Maybe several churches in your neighborhood, maybe several, several churches in your town, but not all the churches that you, the one that you might like may not be one God wants you to go to. Amen. So ask God, what church would he have you to go to so that you can be strengthened, so that you can be encouraged? Amen. And when he, and when he give you the, the instructions, just go to that area, go to that one that he's instructing you to go to. And watch how fast you begin to grow in the spirit. Amen. God love you, but he wants you to have his best. Amen. Now, if you're here today, you need prayer, I'll pray for you right now. If you're here today and you need prayer, I'll pray for you right now. Anyone? Come on. Hallelujah. Now, remember, when I pray and after I'm praying, after I'm done praying, that's the time you release your faith and you receive. In the name of Jesus, I command his blood pressure return to normal. Now, in the name of Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord God. Thank you for it, Father. There go the anointed, boy. Woo! Whoa. 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 That was powerful. Anybody up? Come on, don't be afraid now.
that you want to change. Father, in the name of Jesus, as your son have acknowledged his error, God, you said, who sins you remit, they shall be remitted. Who sins you shall retain, they shall be retained. And Father, as he have repented, we remit those sins. And we ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, to restore, to restore unto him thy loving kindness, thy tender mercies, thy compassion, Lord, and heal him that he will not make this mistake again. Thank you for it, Father. I release the anointing now in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Thank you for the Father. Thank you for the Father. There it is. Receive it. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on. Oh, shit. Oh, second. Oh, Satan of our king. You done? <clears throat> Glory to God. You felt that one, huh? I know you did, but I felt it. <laughs> Glory to God. Anybody else? Amen. So let's pray for these that are with us by the internet. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for those that are with us by the internet. And we declare. And we decree in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, that whosoever believeth shall receive their healing now in Jesus' name. I release the anointing now. Receive your healing right now in Jesus' name. Receive your healing right now in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you. Now, Father, I give you glory. I give you glory. I give you honor, Lord God. I thank you for what... For what's going, for what's taking place right now in the hearts of those yes. who believe, Father. Yes. You said all things are possible to them that believe. And Father, I release my faith. I, I agree with them right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, that they are receiving their healing. And I give you all the glory for it in Jesus' name. Well, glory to God. I've enjoyed sharing with you tonight. And I tell you what, oh, it's been a refreshment even to me. And I want y'all to join us again on Tuesday night as we come back again, sharing with you. The Word of God. I'm telling you, we've been doing a lot of teaching on the spiritual warfare on Tuesday night, and I believe I don't. I believe we're going back along that same line this Tuesday night. But just be ready, just in case God put me on something else. Amen. Just be ready, because we're going to flow with the Holy Ghost, whichever way He's taking, whichever way He's taking us. We love you. We thank God for you. Amen. Remember, Jesus not only come to save you, but He came to heal you and to set you free. We love you until the next time. Be blessed. Bye-bye.